to the show, everybody. I am your host, Dylan Jorgensen, and I want to welcome everyone to episode 39 of the Downtown Podcast, where every Thursday night we fill my living room full of my friends to talk about all the news, events, and people that make this community so special. So Las Vegas is going through a transformational phase right now, and it may be one day the blueprint for the way that anybody who wants to have the benefits of a community at the scale of a city is going to look at. So I want everyone to kick back, grab a beer, and uh, we're going to step into the shoes of the many small business owners, tech nerds, and entrepreneurs that are deciding just how this city-sized experiment plays out. <coughs> or to pay for the beer, actually. We've got Chris here. Yeah, so Chris, I paid for beer. You did right? pay for the beer, and we are makes, all in debt for you. So tell That you makes me time, popular, right? Yeah, so what's going on? Uh, nice. <laughs> right, okay, so, so what's going on? Last time you came on, you were talking about this $1 office space. So yeah, uh, Dylan, it's good to be back. 39 episodes, wow. Um, so good to be here. <laughs> Uh, we at the Glenn Group did kind of a quirky application process because we wanted to bring uh, startup, a promising startup into our office space here downtown. And so we did a $1 office space contest and we are here as promised to announce the two winners of the space and they will be getting prime downtown office space, $1 a month Ooh. for a year. And we're ready to announce. You ready? Ready. Yeah. The drummer that we, we hired could not make it, so no drum roll, but computers oh yeah, for a cause. Yes. <laughs> All right, now we're in. What is computers for a cause? So, computers for a cause is a nonprofit that takes in donated computers, electronics that uh, mainly the business sector doesn't want. We refurbish them and we give them away free of charge to low income families, veterans, and other nonprofits. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I heard you have an announcement to make. We do. We? Uh, we are going to be here starting November 1st, and for the first three months, we already have 40 computers we're looking to donate into the Las, uh, Las Vegas community. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, beer for that. Huh? Yeah. 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 Right there. And time. This is a perfect time to announce our second winner, which is Record Setter. No stranger to you guys on the Downtown no. Podcast. No, a lot of these guys have already got a record in the books. Wow. So Record Setter, these are the, uh, the this is the next company who will also be in our space as well. That's right. And I have a very special announcement. We have just set a world record, unbeknownst to the audience here, <laughs> for the most thigh master squeezes during a recorded yes. interview. Yes, it has been done. I do this for you guys. Uh, this is you provide the, my inspiration. What's the number? How many did you get? Sixteen thigh master squeezes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> for checking. I, I set the bar very high there. Poor so, guy. all right. Well, thank so you. beat that, Katie Kirk. Yeah, thank you for buying the beer for us. We really Thanks appreciate so it. Lot. And good luck with your new office space, everybody. And thank stay you. tuned. We have an announcement coming up where we're going to be setting a world record that will involve the two companies and the Glenn Group that we want to uh, will be unveiling. So stay tuned. Cliffhanger. Okay, so you're at glengroup.com? Glengroup the glengroup.com. Thank okay. you. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Get ready for a movie that's going to blow your mind, The Crystal Crypt. And we have Shahab Zargai here, so tell us a little about this movie yeah. and what you're looking for from the audience. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, essentially, it's a science fiction independent film I've been working on for the past year. Uh, it uh, incorporates live action, CG, and hand-drawn animation. Wow. Um, it takes place a thousand years in the future. Um, <laughs> Earth and Mars are on the cusp of a major large-scale war. And we find ourselves on the last ship leaving Mars for Earth. Um, and we're really excited because it's based on a story by Philip K. Dick, whose stories inspired Blade Runner, Minority Report, The Adjustment Bureau, A Scanner Darkly. Um, and essentially, uh, there's three ways that you can watch the film. 2014, 2015, we're going to go through the film festival circuit. Uh, so if you can catch it at a film festival, 
fantastic. Uh, we actually have an Indiegogo right now where we're giving away downloads of the film and DVDs with special features. Uh, that ends October 15th. After that, no more DVDs. So that's, uh, that brings me to why I'm here. Uh, we're gonna do some premieres, LA, New York, and Las Vegas. And I live in Las Vegas, so I want it to be really special. Um, I, I, I love this new downtown experiment. It, like you said, it's, it's building to this amazing thing. So I really want to have the premiere in downtown. If anybody has a venue in mind, tweet at me, send me an email. Um, I, I want this to be really special, so. Uh, Right, it's no joke. You've got futuristic space guns. You've got all sorts of cool Martians. stuff in the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> sounds awesome. Everything you can ask for. So, what's the email address that people can email you at? Um, you can email me at shahab at assuranceadvertising.com or shahab zagari, and that's the handle on Twitter. Excellent. And I heard you're going to be signing posters. Uh, yeah, so I After have posters for part. everybody here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel, sure, I feel kind of nervous signing them, but. <laughs> If you want it signed, I'll sign it. I threw that in there. That's good. You got to sign it now. That'll be good. All right. Well, thank you very much Thanks for coming Thanks for out. having me. Fantastic. To so for the events this week, we also have um, Amy Pellegrini, and she's from Town Bike, which is opening in the Jewel, correct? It is. Yeah. I opened about a month ago. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've heard that the Jewel is quite the place to be. And there's it a is. couple of Jewel residents in the front row today at the audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about the bike shop, because I hear that there's certain brands that only you guys carry and things right. like that. I carry um, Brooklyn Cruisers, uh, state bicycles out of Tempe, Arizona. Um, I also have Retrospect Bikes, and um, I miss one, Linus. Excellent. Yeah. And tell, tell me more about this bike out the front here um, that you brought along. This is a Retrospect bike. I just uh, got these last week. So it's a single speed fixie. Excellent. Yeah. Now, I've been told to look for several layers of paint. <laughs> Are you going to tell me that story? Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't make up my mind on colors. And <laughs> these poor people that helped me, my friend Don helped me with the store. And uh, out of the goodness of his heart, he just came down and it's like, yeah, I'll paint anything. So I had to paint the ceiling and paint the walls. And, you know, the first layer of paint, I was like, yeah, I don't like it so much. Second layer, I was like, I'm sorry, one more time. <laughs> and the third one, he just shook his head. He's like, whatever you want. And it was, it was really nice of him. So that's a mission, go in there and find out what the other layers yeah, are. So yeah, you can find a corner of a shop. That's... Yeah, I thought emerald green was going to be the color. So right. And you've been pulling the fire alarm to get business, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard yeah. that, too. Sorry, sorry about this. But for the Jewel residents, um, I actually evacuated the building twice. Yeah, I heard so about that. When you do construction <laughs> But on not on purpose. You had no, a, uh... no, not on purpose. But while um, they're down there, you can have a look at the bikes. Right. right. <laughs> now that you're all outside. Yeah. So. Um, my bad. Um, the first time they thought it was funny, the second time not so funny yeah. anymore. Third time maybe it'll be funny again. Yeah. We'll see. We hope that. Yeah. I probably have to pay for that one. Yeah. Well, excellent. I'm sure you'll get a lot of patrons because it is kind of the biking like area exactly. of, of downtown yeah. Las Vegas. And I do so. rentals too, so it's uh, $35 a day for rentals. Oh, that's good value. Yeah. And you can ride a really sweet bike like the one there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's excellent. the townbike.com? Yep, the townbike.com. The town okay. Excellent. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. So, um, when we talk about events and you want to be able to remember them, you know, I go through them pretty quickly. And so if after the show you'd like to do a recap of those events and find out when they are, you can go to downtownpodcast.tv and we have a calendar there where we enter in all of the events that we talk about as well as any extra bonus ones. And there's some really cool community calendars that we've linked to that. All right, we'll move on to the event section. Thank you guys for coming Thank out. You. Thank you. Yeah. Tonight, and they are energetic. Tonight. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh. So we're kicking off our event segment with talking about the fact that it's normally Tech Cocktail Week. And the reason why it's not quite Tech Cocktail Week this time is because Tech Cocktail are focusing on their awesome Celebrate event, which we'll be talking about at the end of the segment. So instead, we're going to be talking about what's actually after the Celebrate event, which is the Life is Beautiful Festival. Right. right? Now, who's going to Life is Beautiful? Who's planning on that right now? Yeah. Uh, 
for those who are going or for those who still want to buy a ticket if they're not already sold out, listen up because I'm going to tell you about some of the coolest events for you to attend during that festival. The first one coming up is on the 25th of October, so that's on Friday, and it's the Life is Beautiful Festival kickoff party, which is Grills and Guitars hosted by Blue Ribbon. Now, this event is very cool. You definitely want to go to this because there's going to be 15 celebrity chefs, gourmet comfort food, and live music. So if you're expecting traditional backyard barbecue, you may notice that there'll be a bit of a twist on that. I'm not going to tell you exactly what that is. And the festival kickoff party will also pair beer, wine, cocktails, and flame kiss fair that will satisfy all of the senses, which mm. sounds pretty awesome to me. <laughs> so Absolutely. that's going to start at 8 p.m. and it is for people 21 and over, unfortunately. But for those who are old enough, can get down to that on the 25th of the October. Qualifier kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, qualifier kids. Sorry. I was looking at you guys. <laughs> So if that's not enough for you, on Saturday and Sunday, and that's the 26th and 27th of October, the Life is Beautiful Culinary culinary crawl is going to be happening. That is a mouthful. (laughs) So it's going to be featuring some really awesome culinary experts, and it's going to be a three-hour dining tour uh, designed to introduce your palates to a variety of tastes. So guests will be guided on an adventure to three different venues, each with a different chef host to show off their food to you, which is pretty awesome. So it's going to be a unique experience that pairs creative dishes with specially prepared cocktails, wines, or brews. So uh, basically, that's for 21 and over, and the ticket price includes the food and the beverage. It's from 5 till 8 p.m., and the restaurants featured are Eat, Park on Fremont, The Flame Steakhouse, and La Thai. So I know that that's nice. a fav- all of those four are a favorite among just about everyone who eats downtown. So definitely get down to that. And do you use the word culinary in Australia? Do you have that? Culinary? Yeah, you yeah. use culinary? Okay, yeah. okay. Make yeah, sure. I just... Just want to make sure. I mean, I would have messed it up too. I'm just curious. I, <laughs> this is like this... like a loo or something. This is like I don't this $2.50 know. Cents thing all over okay. again, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. So to make sure. Okay, okay, Thanks, okay. Dylan. So I'm very tempted to whip out some Australian slang now just to bamboozle you, but right. I won't. So crikey... Bamboozle? Bamboozle. Bamboozle. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> never mind, never mind. So if you're not already chucking a wobbly from how awesome the last couple of events that I just... That's a real term, I promise. <laughs> the Life is Beautiful Culinary Village, see, I can say it now, is also happening on the 26th and the 27th. So if the previous event on the weekend wasn't enough, you can also get to the Culinary Village. Now, this is really cool because there's going to be over 50 restaurants that are going to be featuring in a bazaar, and they're going to have things like gourmet dishes that are all sold a la carte, and so you can buy them for $10 or less, which is really good value. So you have 50 restaurants to choose from, guys. So there's going to be chefs on stage as well, and 20 of the most highly regarded chefs will be intermixing their sizzling skills with aromatic ingredients live on stage, which sounds pretty awesome to me too. So you definitely need to get down to that. Now, if you weren't excited enough about the weekend and you wanted to gear up with a little bit of technical fun, before that, <laughs> uh, before that, uh, it is actually Tech Cocktail is having their Celebrate event, and we talked to Frank about this a few episodes yeah. ago, and we're very happy to welcome him back. And Thank you're you. going to be telling us about the hackathon that's happening during that. Yeah. Event, so, right? last time I was here, I talked about Celebrate. We've been touring the country, trying mm-hmm. to find the hottest startups. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're almost done with our tour, and uh, we've got two more events, and then it celebrates. So the 24th, 25th, uh, downtown at Meet. Mm-hmm. Um, will be the startup competition, but then while that's going on, we're going to have developers, designers, hackers, people that want to just make stuff, um, developing and creating uh, different products as well. And we'll be kind of cutting in and out as they do that. The winners of the hackathon, and it's being organized by Jimmy Jacobson and oh, excellent. Um, Kelly. So you guys, they're nice. really yeah, good absolutely. at organizing hackathons. Yeah. The fashion hackathon on the weekend was. Yeah. <laughs> there are drill sergeants for this whole situation. Excellent. And uh, they'll be keeping that going. And we've got some speaker, a couple of special speakers coming in to, to talk, you know, with the developers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, they're going to be, you know, doing this two days, and then the the winners will actually get an opportunity to win prizes, but also uh, present on stage too. Wow, so, that's yeah, really that cool. So, yeah. so um, there is an attendee limit, right? So people need to get in pretty yeah, fast. Yeah, so it's 125 limit because we want to make sure it's pretty tight and sure. uh, you can just go to celebrate.tech.co to find out more about it if you go to schedule and hover over it, it talks about the hackathon there's a whole page that talks about what's going excellent. on excellent this so, is shaping up to be a really awesome event Frank. yeah we're really excited um, it's been it's like our big kind of Super Bowl so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. The Tech Cocktail Super Bowl? It's like the yeah. Super Bowl right, of Tech Cocktail The nachos stuff. ready. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, yeah, we've got two more events in, in uh, KC. I'm going to go to Kansas City next week. And, uh, wow. Yeah, we have an event tomorrow in Pittsburgh, but we're not, I'm not teleporting there or anything like that. So Excellent. So yeah. the dates and the place again, for those who missed it? It's at Meet LV, mm-hmm. uh, which is right down the street on Bridger and... 
block from Las Vegas Boulevard, whatever that street is. Either fourth or sixth. Yeah, fourth, <laughs> whatever way you can, you can Yeah, one way or the other, you'll find it. And Excellent. It should, be, it should be a lot of fun. So. Great. I can't wait to see what people are going to make. I know. Yeah. yeah. Excited to see what happens. Cool. Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Appreciate you, And Frank. that's the events for this week. Thanks a lot for the warm welcome. <laughs> All right, so we got our next guest here. He is the founder of VentureLoft Network, which is created to help fellow entrepreneurs like yourselves with infrastructure development problems. And he is also our Southwest Region Champion for Up Global, which was officially backed by the White House just a few hours ago. Uh, well, basically, the <laughs> announcement was made by President Obama uh, today, but it's been around for a while. Uh, it basically came about after Startup America and Startup Weekend uh, merged uh, so to form this global entity uh, to pretty much help entrepreneurs around the world. Uh, you know, according to precedent, uh, we're talking about 500,000, helping 500,000 entrepreneurs throughout the world. I just came back from five country trip and very inspiring trip. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, and, and we also, you are also the author of this book, which is called Winning Lessons for Entrepreneurs in the Conceptual Economy. And it's actually been sitting on our shelf here for the next, for the last maybe five, six weeks. So it's a pleasure to have the actual author come on and talk about a book that we've had up here and have all read. So um, put your hands together for our guest. And this is Jay Maharjan. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> the cowbell cracks me up. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, so so to start, what's the what's the conceptual economy? Sure, sure. Uh, well, conceptual economy. Uh, basically, uh, I come from a pretty broad background. I have engineering. I went to art school, art center, college of design in Pasadena. Did my MBA. Uh, Peter Drucker was my mentor. Uh, kind of pretty broad academic credentials. But but what happened was. Uh, you know, I basically became an entrepreneur 16, 17 years back. Uh, degrees probably help, not sure. Uh, but, but basically, uh, you know, true. yeah, the, the knowledge economy, you, yeah. know, the, you know, your parents wanted you to be a doctor, engineer, and, you know, family full of doctors and engineers. That's how uh, I started. But, but entrepreneurship was truly my calling, and I, in hindsight, it looks like everything was planned, but it was not. Right. <laughs> well, okay, so I don't want to yeah. talk about that next. So in, in the book, you talk about your entrepreneurial start, and it did, you were an entrepreneur inside of a bigger organization when you were working at Chrysler. So I was wondering if you could share that story with the audience, because there's a lot of people out here that are thinking about making that, that jump, and um, maybe try to explain really how you got your entrepreneurial start. Uh, sure, sure. Well, when I was 20 years old, I got internship. Uh, working for Chrysler, uh, a big big company, and and basically, you know, I was hoping for for easy summer, but what turned out to be pretty chaotic summer. Chrysler was going through one of the largest recalls uh, with their door panel. Uh, it was 1996 Jeep Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, the internal door panel, one part was peeling off, and and basically all the brand new cars, like right out of the lot. 10% of all the cars out of 1,400 cars every day, uh, they had that defect. So, so my boss, my mentor, and Gary, some, yeah. somebody I write about, uh, you know, he basically, <clears throat> that was his project, and uh, the intern that he had to mentor was not the priority, you know. Right. So, so basically, he let, let me loose, uh, and I, what happened was uh, I, ended up, I ended up coming in with the solution for the project, you know, versus hundreds of engineers working on it. So, so, so my solution saved Chrysler 30 million, close to 30 million. Yes. My, my work saving them 30 million, <laughs> no small thing. Uh, and you were just an intern working, according to your book, you were just working on the weekends. This was, you just wanted to solve this problem in a way that their engineers didn't, right? Like, I mean, basically it, it, it was, yeah, exactly. So, so the engineers were going through a prototypical way of solving problems. And, 
and me being a naive young intern gave you the uh, advantage yeah exactly yes. <laughs> so so that's what happened and uh it was blessing in disguise but but entrepreneurship was probably the only exciting uh adventure that can follow what happened there because 60 days uh big solution you know you're treated really nicely because of the uh, you know, uh, saving the money. The money. You save them. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, that was the story. Yeah. Okay. Well, and so when I read this, I wanted to touch on your mentor. So you tell your mentor Gary in this book as being the person that actually said, you know, you're an intern, but let me give you the chance to solve this, even though we have an engineering team, right? And that was a big part of your entrepreneurial spirit. But later in the book, you talk about finding out after you were kind of done with this whole thing that uh, he, during that whole time, was suffering from a really serious cancer. And he ended up passing away um, just briefly after you stopped working for the company, and he was only 42 years old. So I wanted you to talk about um, looking back on that experience, how the knowledge that you learned and um, kind of the entrepreneurial spirit that you grew from him changed when you reframe it into a situation where you knew the whole time he was basically suffering from his cancer. Well, well uh, again, when we were talking yesterday, I appreciate you kind of bringing that up because that was... Uh, very emotional from me from the point of view that I'd never worked anywhere and kind of working in a corporate scenario and working under a very tough boss. I didn't know he was suffering from cancer, but but he was very mean, you know. And he was mean to you? Yeah, he was, oh, okay. he, yeah, he was mean to everybody. But he was, he was, just, <laughs> he was just a prototypical kind of engineering manager, very smart, bright, uh, but he, he didn't have that personable kind of you know, touchy feeling, kind of, you know, uh, more. Uh, so, so he, was, he was very black and white uh, engineering manager. Uh, but, but again, I kind of later found out uh, he 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 was suffering from cancer, and and but but still, he helped me a lot. Uh, right. And and you know, he kind of introduced me to that world of mentor mentee relationship. You know, that's the that's the you know after twenty years, I still kind of keep that principle alive. You know, basically, uh, he was one of the mentors who wanted <clears throat> his mentees, that would be me, you know, right. uh, everybody else was older engineers, uh, to be almost like better than him in a way, you know. And kind of, he gave me so much right. confidence that later on I, I had confidence to run companies with hundreds of people. And so it, it was, uh, uh, you know, that yeah. experience was very... I just always wondered about that. One of my, yeah, some of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs were all about, like, had the motivation he drew from knowing that he might die too, you know, so it must have been something to really learn that very few people get to work under someone like that so uh yeah it truly felt that way thing yeah. okay well so you've been uh, you talk a lot about the in the book about this startup culture and kind of what tony's doing and a number of other startups like um rob roy and the innovation center and some mm. of um the stuff that we're actually all part of right now the story that's playing out right now so i wanted to see kind of now that you've been through this whole cycle and you're observing this kind of restart what would you do if you were um, with limited resources and you were in the economy, or you were in Las Vegas just like us, what kind of business do you think would be best to start and vertical to tackle? Uh, well, well I, one thing I dive into in my book is, you know, Peter Drucker was my mentor. And one thing, it was a great opportunity to work with him for an entire year. And one thing he always taught me was, you know, kind of do the right thing before you do things right. Meaning a lot of people do, you know, things right, but ended up, you know, kind of being broke and not having uh, enough competitive advantage to sustain their businesses. So, so, so the most important thing is to do the right thing. And the right thing, I mean, you can find out through a number of ways. Uh, the first thing is, I didn't think anybody should start a business for glamorous reason. You know, entrepreneurship right, is painful, right? right? So it's everybody knows, uh, like I said, in hindsight, things turn out fine. But but the, if you were to ask me certain <laughs> times in my journey, yeah. Yeah, it was not that fun, right? right. So, uh, so, so again, try to address pain points, uh, you know, the downtown, whether, whether you're here in, in Vegas or other part of the world, it's very important to uh, make uh, you know the find the pain points that you come across. You know, uh, you don't have to uh, be another founder of Google or Microsoft. Uh, you know, it's rare, right? So, but but you can always find something you can make your community better. And in Vegas, the same same way. Um, this is amazing story being heard around the world, and six universities I spoke spoke at this last three weeks. 
but you know, I, I share your story. I'm inspired by all the stories coming out of here. I feature in my book. And, and I just, I strongly feel this is just the beginning, you know? Right. And so okay. that's the beauty, you know? Okay, so for the last talking point, I just want to make sure you talk about Up Global and the initiative that just kind of uh, got endorsed by Obama this afternoon. Sure. And uh, Up Global, once again, uh, it, it was fo uh, formed after merging with Start Startup America and Startup Weekend. And Startup America was involved in for over a year. Uh, one of the reasons I moved to Nevada, I, I was really passionately involved back in California. And yeah. friends suggested I move here and take the lead. And uh, <clears throat> I'm very glad I did. Uh, you know, I met a lot of good friends here. Um, right. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah it's just your cowbell guy. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. So it's a lot, uh, you know, so, so it's just the perfect environment. So, so I want to tell the story about Nevada to the rest of the world and just uh, vice versa, you know, bring great things here in, here in the city. Okay. Well, you're doing a good job of it. So everybody can download his book or actually buy it in paper version, like, like I got it, uh, on Amazon.com. It's called The Winning Lessons in Entrepreneurs. <laughs> All right, the winning lessons for entrepreneurs in the conceptual economy. And jmaharjan.com is the website. You can follow him on Twitter, the same thing, jmaharjan. And uh, you're also going to be speaking at CES on January 9th, right? That's right. I'll be speaking on venture capital and in a, uh, a business of innovation. That's, okay. that's the forum. Okay, well, I appreciate you talking about us in your book. And thank you very much for coming out to visit us. Thank you, you for the <laughs>of public gets some cheering, right? <laughs> so he does have a secret to how he gets the crowd so loud and so cheery. Why don't you demo that for us, which you created at the Fashion Hackathon this weekend, right? That's right, yeah. And I heard there was a really awesome Meow Shoe project there as well. But maybe yeah, we'll we won't about talk it. about that. No, no. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, um, it's built on a beta brand jacket. It's a lead panel, which functions as an applause meter. Um, so because I have timing problems sometimes, this handles the Applause countdown for me a little bit. And as you can see, the volume goes up and down. Just an Arduino hack, and it was a lot of fun to work on. So You guys lit it up red again. Well done, guys. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, thank you, and we'll see you next week. Next week.